What's up? And welcome back to the worm. We've got some weird weather for the next two days. So I'm gonna do something with it. I think I got uh, Tito coming out. He's gonna stay for a couple days. It was supposed to be this massive storm uh, starting today or tomorrow. And then for a couple days, we were supposed to get like, I don't know, over a foot at some point. It said a foot and a half. Now there's nothing. However, today is supposed to be in the 40s, <laughs> which I can't even imagine. I'm taking layers off already. It feels so bizarre. And uh, tomorrow night is supposed to be, I think here it'll probably be negative five or negative 10. So it's gonna suck. And that's why we thought it'd be fun to uh, do something for a couple days, kind of take advantage of the huge temperature swing. So the strange thing about this video is you guys know what it's about and I don't. I don't know what we're gonna do the next day, but you've seen some kind of title in a thumbnail, so that's really, that is super bizarre. You guys know that before I do. Anyway, I'll show you my picnic table, and this is what I have in mind. I have no idea what we'll get to. I don't know when he's getting here. It's supposed to pour rain this afternoon, which is like three or four hours from now or something, so we'll just see what happens. But here's what I got in mind. I bought a couple targets, which are, you can, I can shoot anything that I have at it. It's uh, good steel. They're quite expensive and I'm cheap, so I didn't get very many. Got this uh, flip up for a 22. And then I stopped by the uh, welder and just asked him for scrap. So we got some thick stuff, some thin stuff, whatever. Some of these uh, targets that he makes, but didn't have the stand and everything. So I don't know. Just picked up some random stuff that I can cut out with a uh, angle grinder. I was thinking it would be really cool to make like a walkabout on the entire property have targets all over. I've got trails pretty much around the entire property and a whole bunch in the middle going here and there. So I was thinking about making one loop through the property somehow, putting targets all over in the woods. And for the time being, I'm gonna set them all up just for a 22. Tito got a new 22, one that matches uh, my Ruger Wrangler. This is a six shot uh, 22 long rifle. I like to shoot that because uh, although it costs twice as much as it did a couple years ago, it's still relatively cheap. So you can go out and shoot for a couple hours and not just be counting the dollars every time you pull the trigger. So that would be rad. I'm thinking like some of the bigger targets you could do like shoot from the hip, you know, maybe, I don't know, five yards or 10 yards. I don't know. I'm not really good at shooting from the hip, but I'm going to learn. And I think it's going to be crazy fun. I've always wanted to do that. And why not now that I got a 22 that's perfect gun for it? Might as well work on it. And we'll throw all the steel on the four-wheeler and just drive the trails and set stuff up and then maybe make a couple laps if we can do it before it rains. Also, I picked up six elbows and also some uh, stove pipe. This is, I think, five or six uh, two-foot sections of stove pipe. And you guys have been, most of you have been following along. Know the uh, little man cave that I've been building the last few months with uh, from trees right here on the site building all the lumber with a uh, chainsaw. I think it's about 95 square feet or so. I've been living out here now over just about two years actually in a tent, one of many tents right here. Uh, Tito and I came out here about this property a little over two years ago and we came out here with our camping gear and just decided we'd stay as long as it was fun. And I still think it's a friggin' blast. It's like, I can't think of anything more fun to do so I just stay here and live in a tent. But on the really, really gnar gnarly cold weather, uh, I wanted a place to escape to and dry my stuff out, so I built this. Last video, I uh, milled up some fir trees to make the bunk, fold down bunk, and a really beautiful uh, cedar tree to make these workbenches. So this one's a little lower, so it's kind of more of a table. And all, what I've got for heat in here is this little sheet metal stove, which is, I think, meant to be used in a wall tent. I'm sure some people are curious with the brand. I think it's New Way, N-U-W-A-Y. Just got like two grill burners in it, and it works all right. When it's uh, five or ten below tomorrow night, it's not that you turn it on high. There's no way it'll get it up to room temperature in here, which is fine. I'm not really trying to do that. I just want to bring it up to, you know, something that's reasonable to sleep, like, you know, 10 or 20 degrees or something. And when it is burning, uh, I noticed this is quite hot all the way up, which, duh, of course it is. But I had this weird idea of making some kind of radiator to get a little more heat out of that so it's not just all going up the chimney. So that's what those elbows and stuff for. <laughs> it's going to be really weird. I don't think you could do this with a wood stove. Honestly, I don't even know if you could do it with a propane stove, but 
that's not going to stop me. I think I'm going to go up, put an elbow, and do this kind of deal with a bunch of elbows and back up. So there's a bunch of bends in it. I don't know if it'd be an issue with uh, venting if they're going, you know, at a 90, but I can always bend this to kind of like, I have no idea how the next two days are going to go, but I am really excited. It's just going to be something different. Like every, I know every video I've done for the last, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 videos has all been building this stuff. So I'm excited to do something a little bit different. And it's always fun when Tito's out here. We find all sorts of uh, great ways to get in what would be trouble if other people were around. He hasn't, uh, I think the last time he was here, I was putting up the first wall, like framing the first wall of this. He helped me put some of the floor joists in. And then I think before he left, I was putting one up, just tipping the first wall up. So it'll be interesting to see what he thinks of this. Any hoozle, I'm gonna uh, maybe uh, get some tools out, do a little work till he gets here. Or I should probably practice my shooting. I think I'll do that. Don't you like the roof tar? I think that's that's my crowning achievement. Oh, I just found, you know, I use this because it's so cheap. I just found it less than half that price. I bought you a whole case of it. Did you? Yeah. Good. I got a 12er. It looks sweet. Yeah. It really does. I also like this, that they're all wonky. See how they're not like lined up because yeah. the boards weren't lined up. And that looks beautiful. Those belt logs. How much people pay for that? The maximum I'm willing to pay is uh, chainsaw gas. Kind of shrunk a bit when I put the furniture in here, but it's nice though. Amazing. Man, that's so hot. Get up that bit. Yeah, it's pretty wet. Not too bad. Not too bad. It's incredible. Uh, you want to you wanna see something really cool? Yep. This is a stove. Isn't that a nice sound? It really is. There you go. See, now I've got heat and everything because I'm real fancy. I didn't have a look-see. I know there's a very short amount of time that you can be here without screwing with the knobs on it. <laughs> You're totally right on that. <laughs> yeah, for this place in the winter, all there is to do is turn them on high and leave it. It's really not enough sauce for an uninsulated place to keep it uh, hot in the winter, but... Here, show the good people of the world what you got. This is the fine tool that I chose. And of course, Tito had to get something a little saucier. And Hot you'll clear. notice also when he puts it down, he has to... <laughs> I went for the ugly look, like my parents did. <laughs> I was looking at holsters too, and we decided that we're just going to get a hide and make our own holsters out of leather. So, yeah, let's... cheapos for now. All right, come on, shoot it. Yeah, let's... Oh, I gotta load it. No, you don't. Taking too long, I can't wait. That one steel target's been there since, what, like the first month we were out here? Yep. And it's on a stump, like this tall and this big around, and it's almost cut all the way out of the stump. There's like a hole right through that thing. Do it! Can't see where I'm hitting. It doesn't matter where you're hitting as long as it feels good when you pull it does the trigger. Feel good. 
you're going old school. What year did you say that was? Nine, it was like 1925. <laughs> Holy cow, that's quiet. <laughs> Is that the subsonic? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Your giggles are louder than the than the powder going off. It's like a drive through beer store, but hardware. Yeah. Squeeze those cheeks. <laughs> so close. <laughs> A monster is that a artist conch or whatever it's called that's huge that's a philatelist you're a philatelist Ooh, hi there what's a philatelist Collector of stamps. <laughs> Funny, those things stick and they like float around in your head for a, a while. You're like an hour later, why did he say the word philatelist? Yeah. What does that mean? I, that happens to me more than it doesn't. Half the time somebody says something, it takes at least 45 minutes for me to <laughs> comprehend it or to even think of the questions to ask. To, <laughs> to ask yourself? <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, first target's up. Should we shoot it? Just make sure it works. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to hip shot it from there, but we ought to try to get two shots out of each target. So why don't we do one from back there, six rounds, and then walk up and you can show everybody how you can hip shot a three inch target at 20 yards. All right, now we'll mark it right here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll be ready. Now, Taryn, the really important thing is that you don't shoot the camera. <laughs> All right, I'll move it. Yeah. Draw. I can't hit anything. Well, we better try it one more time. Yep. Yeah, I think I gotta do it in the front with all my clothes on. Draw! Okay. Huh. Huh. So you still gonna shoot it from the hip from up there? I think I'll be better at it. Where was your line? Oh, right there. Okay, let's see what you got. Oh, I can get you and the target in there, so we'll really know what happened. All right. Free, see? Freeze, see? Oh. Freeze, see? Freeze, see? Wow. I can't believe you hit it twice. <laughs> the other ones were right next to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you took some pain off the edge. All right, let me try. <laughs> All right, so coach me through this. What am I supposed to say? Freeze, see? Is it freeze, see? Yeah. Is that good? <laughs> Any variation of that. Okay. See? Freeze. See? Maybe say filthy animal. You filthy animal. There you go. I'm telling you. Freeze. See? Ah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the attitude. Yeah, it's all in the 20s vernacular. Yep. All right. On to the next. Mm -hmm.
That ain't bad. A eh? spray paint. Yes. Quick, got to get our hands free so we can shoot. Ah, crap! Damn it. All right, let's see if we can see it. It's right hanging under that down tree there. Okay, let's see what you got. Free. Free. He's still standing there. He listened. Okay, mister, I'm, I'm frozen. What do you want me to do now? I'm sorry. What's all that whizzing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still standing here, mister. What's all what that do you whizzing? want me to do? <laughs> You look like a freaking a decked out Yeti carrying both of those. You're wearing all black. You've got the lope. I am. The hatchet and the machete. That's my spirit animal. <laughs> oh, you be able to drive through this? Had to run back to camp because we ran out of uh, cable. The uh, chainsaw mill no, no longer works. <laughs> one project at a time. One takes precedence over another. Say not for... It's just not for anything but shooting on it. Oh, this is going to be the best target so far. <laughs> it's a little heavier than this. Yeah, this is great. You walk back as far as you think you can hit that thing. That's a huge target. I'm a bad shot. I'm sure you can't tell in here. Dude, we can go back twice that far easily. Twice? I don't think the pistol's that accurate. The pistol? Is it you think it's the pistol that's the problem? Yep. Oh. No way. I can Come barely on. see it. Come on. Let's go back as far as we can before it crooks here. Oh. Dude, that is great. Look how far you can see it, and it's dead center. About as far as you can go. Maybe right here, right in this deer bed. Target is right through there, I believe. I can't quite see it on the camera. I think that's it. All right, show us what you we got. You have honors. I still don't feel like that's that far. That's a big old sucker. How many yards is that? 50? At least, huh? You think that's 50 yards? Uh. I, I I would get I was like thinking about meters. Oh, so what is that like twelve meters or something? Huh. Well <laughs> Did you aim up? Uh no. No. <laughs> oh I think they're pretty flat at eleven meters. It took a second for it to hit. Yeah. Let me try one more time. Safety first. You want to say that again for the camera? <laughs> he, he said I'm cheating because I got a longer barrel. Which is kind of true. I wouldn't call it cheating, but then what was the rest of the sentence? It. Because I'm closer to the target. <laughs> <laughs> what a turd. Oh, what was that noise? Oh, look who's come alive. Oh! All right, now, so that was, uh, I counted up 50, what did I say, 53? 53 or 57 yards. Now we're at 12? Yeah, about 11 meters. <sighs> Just shoot it from the hip, would you? Drop it. 
Freeze. See? Oh. <laughs> that last one hit a cloud. <laughs> there it is. There it is, and I'm out. Oh. Did you hit the carabiner? Uh-oh. Carabiner's missing. Shot both the gates right off. That's because I am a precision instrument. Hold on, hold on. Got to get my muzzle, keep my muzzle safe here. There we go. Whoa. All right, one more round, and then we gotta go put another target up, and I got an idea. This is what I wanted this gun for in the first place. That's good fun, they were all right there. They were close together. You got your fan and glove on. Oh, he hit one. Nice work. Yeah. That's fun, huh? That's yeah. an easy way to get rid of 60 cents. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. All right, next target. Yep. Put a little flipper job. How long do you, before your dad gets one of these? Wait until he actually owns one. Uh, as soon as he sees the video. Uh, what are we looking for? We're going to do a under the tree flopper. What do we have left? We got one. Oh, we got the one big dong that just has one hole. That's easy to hang. And then we got one, two floppity poppers. I haven't been back on this trail all winter. Surprised there's not more stuff down. Don't you, don't you need to cut them off with this? How on earth could you break those just with your hand strength? Some of them are almost as big round as a pencil. Whoa, nice shot. back there. I think that's gonna gong nicely. Yeah. Oh goodness, let's try it. We ran out of light and we only got one target left, so we're gonna go look for it. I think I'll put it right in front of the uh deer castle. And then you could sit in there and shoot a rifle down at it, or you can walk right out there after you do the loop here. So we'll go have a look, see, and then eat some din din. Oh, yeah. I thought there was a good stump here. 
I'd like to put something right here. Huh, that looks awesome with the layers of snow on top. After a hard day of shooting, Tito brought us some nice grub. Delicious. Mm -hmm. And an iPad with movies on it. We got the heater on, the lamp, which is probably kicks out as much heat as the heater. <laughs> And a nice spread, so it's movie time. Tonight's a lot warmer than tomorrow night's gonna be, so it'll be easier to hang out and chill in the man cave that uh, doesn't have very good heat. Yeah, tomorrow night's gonna suck. Yeah. Oh, dude, such a great schmear of flavors. Mmm. Man, it was so warm last night. I woke up sweating a couple times. I think it was like high 20s or something. I mean, you're dressed for 15 degrees lower than that. It's too much. <laughs> I woke up, drank my coffee, and then uh, did a walk of the targets. Shot about maybe 100 rounds or something. Just actually walking it to see what the spacing is like. I got to go put like three or four more targets in this morning. See what Tito wants to do. I don't know if he's just going to hang out and read in the uh, Deer Castle or what, but I do want to at least get some shelves in here today. Maybe get that funny stove pipe in. I'm so curious if it'd actually do anything. If it would still, the stove would still burn. There's only one way to know. We could all guess, but I think sticking it in there is the way to the way to figure it. All right, finished my breakfast, and I was doing a little thinking. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to hold off on that. I mean. I, I do understand clearly it's not a great idea to purposely run stovepipe sideways <laughs> for venting reasons, but I think I got a better idea to make kind of a radiator and I can use a lot of the same stuff I already bought. So if you're interested in seeing that fail massively, come on back next week or in a couple weeks or whatever, I'll try it out. I'm gonna have to get a couple more parts. So that leaves me with what? Either more shooting or some shelves. Oh, instead of putting up shelves, we spent the last uh, hour or two putting up the rest of our target. So now we're going to leave the four-wheeler here and do a walking tour, show you what we got. We got a couple of really fun ones. You don't want to run out halfway. I don't know whose brilliant idea this was to do this on the coldest day of the year. I mean, it's not the coldest, but it's chilly. Coming upon the first target now. What on earth would you do? I see some pieces of tree missing. Oh, I heard something there. Got oh. it a couple times. What is that? I think that's a six inch target at maybe 30 yards or so. That's the first one. All right, next, hang a left at the uh, root ball. And then you guys saw this. I saw this one yesterday. That's the gong out there. That's uh, I think a six or eight incher from about 30 yards again. Oh, nice. Wow, he just turned it on all of a sudden. All right, here's my trick shot. Oh no, that's not going to work. I can't see the target through there. Next, we have a speed shooting target. You have to stay behind the uh, marker here. That's uh, 8 inch at like 15 yards maybe. Shoot, shoot the target. Okay. The target. Wow, that was the worst ever. The target. It's it's a uh, it's definitely a practice skill to be able to just let the hammer go with your thumb, which I do not have that skill clearly. Next one's right there, isn't it? Right from the top of this 
golf tail. This is uh, a little bit longer. Same thing, eight inches at maybe 40 yards. In case you were wondering, we are not very talented. Oh, there it is. We're very talented at putting up uh, low quality, low cost shooting ranges, but the actual uh, trigger squeezing is not our forte. Back out to the main trail. And we realize you can actually see not the next one, but the one after that from here. So if we bring the 22 rifle out, you just barely see it way through the trees down there, the red. So you could shoot it from here and then walk around the corner and uh, handgun it. This is the one that's uh, 60, I think 63 yards to a right down the center there to a 10 inch. couple. I like the bigger gongs. They, they make some nice noise. Then you get to walk up on this one and it's one of the two targets. You can actually fan it. Nice work, sir. <laughs> two out of six. This one, the next one, is a good rifle target too. Because you can stand in the same spot it's straight down there and it's the flopper popper. Definitely hit those carabiners a couple times. Yeah. Oh. You know. Whatever they were. Nickel. 25 cents. So all those movies where you see a 22 hit a carabiner. It's never ending. Like every climbing movie I've ever seen. Yeah. If it's it a good action flick, there's climbing and carabiner shooting. Hollywood magic. These, uh, these flip targets are pretty pretty cheap. I think it was like 12 bucks for one of those. So if we if we end up liking it, I'll get a couple more at some point. Your your first three were on perfectly and then the fourth one was a little astray. It reminded me, do you remember in a police academy where there I think it's the first police academy they're on the line and he comes over. That's good shooting. These are really nice, but it's this one that I find troubling or something like that. Oh yeah, we got some swinger. Next one. This one is the most fun of all of them, I think, by a long shot. Yeah. Oh, here, I'm going to walk down there and just show what it is. This is about 30 yards or so. I think it's a 10 inch target. And we purposely didn't cut anything out of the way. So you gotta kind of shoot through the trees. The wind itself just pushes this around a whole bunch, but it also spins pretty, pretty nicely. So once you get it shooting, especially with two people, it's, uh, it's a fun target. That one's, that one's awesome. Good one. You don't think we're going to shoot all that you know? No, I said it'd be a shame if we didn't. There's no chance that you're leaving with any. <laughs> <laughs> we both grabbed about, I think I had at least a pound pound and a half of <laughs> shells in my pocket when we took off on this walk and we've already gone through almost all of them. I think I shot close to a thousand in the last 24 hours. All right, this is the uh, sniper stage. It's maybe 40 yards and it's a two and maybe a half. This is a plate. kneeling one. What? Maybe I should kneel. Kneel to shoot it? Yeah. Yeah, I think you should. I think it'll help. I don't know if I hit any of those. Yeah, it's hard to say if it helped because I think you hit zero last time and this time. So it might have helped, might have hindered. Did I hit any? I don't it's so hard to tell. 
because it doesn't it doesn't really ring it's so small oh yeah then i heard i hit them all then okay anyway you couldn't tell on to the next one we got what two left yeah i think this should we just call this deer castle way or something this trail needs this road needs a name yeah deer castle way yeah turning right onto deer castle way i noticed you did sig signal when you made that turn all right they already saw this one this is a 10 inch gonger at about what how far is that 25 yards 20 25 meters. huh meters oh i forgot you do meters so like seven meters three and a half okay I like this one too because it swings a little bit, not as much as the last one, but you can shoot it from some number of meters here and then you can go up close and practice your quick draw. Meters. <sighs> Got a couple. All right. One last target. The only thing that makes this one somewhat fun is that you could shoot out the, the window of there. Not shoot out the window, but shoot out of the window. It's only another eight yards or so. Oh, meet, uh, 16.7 meters. But you could definitely uh, roll that window up and shoot from there and hit that target. And when you're done, you can just go in and take a nap. Yep, perfect. Go find some more ammos. I'm gonna go that way. All right, back to the real world. I'm uh, I'm gonna stay in here tonight for the first time because it is getting cold. It is dropping. Temperature's dropping fast. Tito just gave up. He's going back to the Deer Castle to read his book with the heater on. So the only thing I want to do right now before it gets dark is throw a couple shelves in here. I've got some long lumber that would go all the way across these walls. I was just thinking about following this line all the way around and making a shelf that goes full 360, but that long lumber that I have that'll make it all the way across here has a whole bunch of worm holes in it, and I cannot figure out, it's not worms, it's grubs. I think it's uh, arbor beetle grubs, and I cannot figure out if they're actually dead or not. If they can make it through the winter or it really has to be like 30 or 40 below to kill them, I, I don't know. And I'm not gonna chance it. I'm not gonna put a bunch of shelves in here full of those grubs. They are in there. There are a lot of holes and when I was milling it, I could dig down in there and find them still in there. So I just got some shorter stuff. Just gonna pull it out, rip the edges off, throw it up here real quick. Doesn't have to be fancy. I think I got, I don't know, four or five boards to use up. Got an extra cheesy roll I'm trying to warm up. It was frozen solid. I bet that's gonna be good in about 20 minutes. Got these uh, milled up last week. We have we got five and they're all pretty small but we'll make them work might as well leave the live edge on the front of them Got three, three and a half decent boards, really three, and these were, must have been from either side of the log, just barely worth it. You can see how little it actually cut when I milled that, that piece off. So I just, just did it wide enough to knock the edges off to make a straight edge on it and left the curve to it, as you can probably see. So these two are so small, I ripped both sides of this and I'm just going to stick it together and that'll make one reasonably sized shelf. Since I don't have that much lumber to make triangle braces, I'm just going to put one of these. I've got a bunch of 2x4 scraps, so 
I think I'm just gonna use these on every stud with two or three screws in there to, to hold the thing. Two more boards so I guess one on each wall just as far as they go do the same thing there and that'll probably just go to I don't know somewhere around there I was thinking about I'll probably end up cutting this shelf off and do I don't have enough lumber right now to do it but maybe a bunch of corner shelves in there would be kind of nice and maybe even another one up there storage is where it's at around here in two years of living out here in a tent the biggest pain in the ass, bigger than staying dry, staying warm, staying cool, getting water, all that stuff is storage. It's just having like tools and no place to put them where they're not going to get totally ruined. Even like boxes of screws and nails if they're in cardboard boxes, put them in the lean-to, it gets hot, it gets cold, it gets damp and everything gets ruined. So storage shelves are going to revolution. Ah, that might be putting it too strongly. It's going to be really nice to have some storage shelves. Tito was here for a minute. He just came to check to make sure I was still working. Now he's going back to take a nap or something. Can't say I blame him. If I wasn't working, I'd be, I'd be laid out. I'm exhausted. Building and testing shooting ranges really takes it out of you. You wouldn't know, but you know, trust me, I'm a professional. All right, got them all up just in time. It's down to about eight degrees outside. Actually, it was getting too hot standing on the ladder in here, so I turned the, turned the heater off. Some of these are probably end up trimming but I figured no sense in wasting it for now until I decide maybe I want to continue that down or whatever. I'll just leave those ends on there. So I'm gonna go see if I can find, find Tito down there somewhere. I don't know if he's planning on hanging in here or if he's just done for the night, but if he's not coming in here, I'm flipping down the bunk and bringing my stuff in. It's a little bit exciting. First night, first night indoors, actually at Ringworm, I guess. I guess the one night I stayed in the Deer Castle that was indoors, so in the vast majority of the nights in the last two years spent out here, this will be the second night indoors. It's gonna be really weird. <laughs> it happened. I'm in here. It's uh the key to staying warm in this place is to never ever ever open the door. And I bet uh with that stove on high and the door not open for a couple hours, you could probably get it to maybe the high 50s in here. It's down in the single digits now outside and it feels pretty good in here. I st you kind of start thinking it's, it's not really that warm in here and then you step outside and realize that eh, after a while it is a fairly significant difference. One exciting thing for the morning is I could brought my extra I got this like backup cheapo camp stove here and my coffee and stuff. So this would be the first time since I've been out here, at least in the winter, that I didn't have to get fully dressed, get all my snow clothes on and everything just to get up and make coffee in the morning and then go back, take it all off to, I usually drink it in the tent in the morning. So I can do it right here. That is going to be, it's going to be something. You can see this is turning into prime real estate. The only place I got to dry out my boots and, uh, keep my water bottles from getting too cold, batteries, boot liners. I'll snap the camera on for a minute in the morning and let you know how it goes. I imagine uh, I imagine it's gonna be good enough. I had to run out real quick just a second ago to get uh, rubbing alcohol because as I suspected, now that this place is just starting to warm up, there's just sap coming out of the walls. <laughs> rubbing alcohol is the one thing that takes it right off your hands, off your all your stuff. So, I'll leave the uh, stove on as low as it goes tonight. Just keep it uh, from
from being too bitter cold and we'll see how it goes. Time to read a book, wake up and see if it is indeed uh, eight below zero. I made it and I made it comfortably. That was actually a great night, except I think I popped a hole in my air mattress, had to get up and blow it up a couple times. It is freaking brisk out there. It's gorgeous though. Sunny, still below zero. Luckily, since I had my coolers in here and it's too damn cold out there to stand and make my uh, French toast. So I had salami on graham crackers <laughs> for breakfast, which is the first couple were kind of weird, but I, uh, I enjoyed it when I woke up turn my headlamp on. Yeah, there's a uh, real fine ice crystals on all the walls and all the metal hardware in here that goes through from the outside. Like the two bolts I put in for that door handle, they're just like caked in ice on the inside. Even the screws, all the screws in the floor that go through and hold the floorboards down, all the screw heads are covered in ice. So it's definitely a chilly one. So I finished my last cup of coffee, get my nerves all jittery and then go hunt down Tito. And uh, I think we're gonna try to do one more round of shooting. We're gonna wait for the last possible minute before he has to leave, so I think it'll be up in the in the single digits anyway. But we'll do one more round, and then I gotta kind of batten everything down, decide if I'm gonna stay in here. Uh, it'll either it's all or nothing. I either stay in here for the next week or just move all my stuff to the tent. It's supposed to snow. I think we're supposed to get a foot and a half of snow in the next five days. So I don't know. Maybe I'll stay in here while it snows. That'd be kind of nice. I don't know what next week's video will be. I'm free to start on another project. I like the idea of taking a few days and just relaxing and enjoying this, but I'm not very good at that. So I got a couple other big projects that I'd like to start on, although for, if it's dumping snow every day, so I'll just be in here fiddling around. Anyway, come back next week if you like. I'll be here or I'll be in the tent. You're welcome to join me. Thanks for watching.